Hi, I'm Alicia, and today I'll be talking to you about how to apply best practices of REST APIs to GraphQL. GraphQL is an open source data query and manipulation language for APIs and a runtime for fulfilling queries with existing data. It's a new way to think about APIs. With GraphQL, you can send queries to get exactly the data you're looking for in one request. GraphQL can enable front and back end teams to collaborate more smoothly when developing applications. Let's look at an example of a GraphQL query. Here, we are querying for user data with the ID of the user. The first thing to note about the query and the response is that they are identical. This is because GraphQL is typed, meaning that what you ask for is what you get back. We are simply just saying, get me the user with this ID and return me back their name, posts, and followers. Now, let's compare this to how we would get the same results using a REST endpoint. Here, we have had to define three separate endpoints in order to have the ability to access the same data. Now, some of you might say that you could reduce this down to just one endpoint by returning the entire user object in the first request. This would be seen as overfetching of data. One key difference to note here is that with GraphQL, you know which objects and data you have available with each query, so you can specify the shape of the data you would like back from the server. With REST, you can't really define what is returned to you as the server decides this. So we can think of GraphQL as a single endpoint upon which we have a set of executable queries that map to a schema of the data. There are three key benefits of using this approach. First of all, all data exchange is performed at a single endpoint. That means granularity for data load, execution of requests in parallel, and query planning. It also means if one resolver fails, the rest of the query can still resolve and return useful data. Secondly, the real strength is in the query language. You can declare which schemas you want the data from and the format of that data, which prevents overfetching and underfetching of data. And thirdly, Availability of native integration with the ReactJS UI framework and other client libraries considerably increases productivity for developers. GraphQL is great, but how does it compare to REST? There are a number of differences between the two, and I'll highlight four of these. When we compare the endpoints, REST makes many smaller requests to many endpoints, and the URL taxonomy is used as a logical API resource manager. GraphQL, on the other hand, makes requests to one endpoint, which results in longer and larger queries for customer data. REST uses HTTP verbs and generally uses JSON XML in order to exchange that data. GraphQL uses POST most of the time and also leverages different query types, specified inside the protocol, not in HTTP. Even though GraphQL uses a custom query language on the request, JSON is returned as a result. When we compare documentation, we'll see that REST uses open API specifications, while GraphQL uses a schema-generated documentation. Frequently, we see customers using graphical or GraphQL Playground to interact with schema-based GraphQL endpoints. From a discovery perspective, the portal offers a veritable playground for developers to try out APIs before they use them in their code while GraphQL comes with a built-in playground that enables users to explore new queries on the fly, including automatic tab completion. While the two solutions are very different, there are a number of best practices in REST APIs that can be applied to GraphQL. Let's quickly look at these best practices. Consistency in GraphQL starts with well-formed GraphQL, and we can apply the best practices of well-formed REST here. Here's an example. You would never expect a well-formed REST query to be a list of employees by department. Rather, a well-formed REST query would be a resource. A graph hierarchy is fundamentally a data-driven hierarchy. It is not a functional hierarchy, like an object model. We should not be treating GraphQL like Java functions. In other words, be data-oriented, not function-oriented. The second best practice is around submitting and retrieving data. Those are not always mirrored operations. In REST, we frequently submit and receive data from different URLs. In particular, when retrieving data from multiple services in a microservice architecture, command query responsibility segregation, CQRS, is common. 
As we think about how this applies to GraphQL, we need to consider that query mutations can get very complex very quickly, especially with many different types when submitting very little data. Applying CQRS to GraphQL can help us avoid this challenge. The third is optimizing for reusability. In REST, we think a lot about our URL taxonomy, pagination, and filtering, because developers can then predict what the behavior will be of any API they call. In GraphQL, we should be doing the same thing. With GraphQL, it is important to be careful with schema stitching because, to the developer, the representation looks like one big graph, but the behavior of the JSON returned might be different. So relay cursor connections and input hints should all present uniform behavior regardless of the portion of the graph being requested. Even with the best practices I mentioned, there are a number of challenges with GraphQL deployments. These revolve around authentication and authorization. For example, GraphQL doesn't solve authorization and does not support authorization for schema browsing. GraphQL doesn't support a standard for throttling or quotas. It does not have a unified view of analytics, which means expanding the view of APIs from simple metrics to business and operational impact metrics can be challenging. And it is based on a single endpoint, which means that there are no URL versions and no support for header or format versioning. An API management solution can help with managing the challenges of GraphQL APIs. An API management platform gives you control over and visibility into the APIs that connect applications and data across clouds or on-premises. Managing your GraphQL APIs with an API management platform enables you to easily manage authentication and authorization, implement throttling or quotas, view detailed analytics, and streamline versioning. To learn more and get started, check out the links in the description below.